Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely 1 12th scale dressing table and stool. And I've kept the stool extremely simple just because the dressing table is quite an advanced project. And for the dressing table and stool I've used a beche wood and that's spelled O-B-E-C-H-E and I'll put all the sizes and the thicknesses of wood that you'll need in the cutting list. And you'll need sheet wood and strip wood. And then for the front legs I've used these Queen Anne legs which are for sale on my um, Etsy store. So I'll pop a link for that below. And these come in packs of four. And you'll need two of them for this project. For the draw knobs I've used these wooden 2.5mm draw knobs which are also available in my Etsy store. The glue, again I've used Gorilla Wood glue. It bonds really quickly and it dries clear. I've used a dark oak interior varnish and that's just a normal household interior varnish. You'll need a craft knife, and I use this Swan Morton knife with a metal handle. It takes a size 10A blade, and that cuts wood up to the thickness of 3mm. A steel rule, obviously for measuring and for cutting your wood along with your craft knife. A nice sharp pencil for accurate marking. A scribe that we use to shape the mould in here at the front of the dressing table and a piece of paper for that as well and some scissors a mini drill to drill the holes for the draw knobs that's got a 1.5mm or 1 16th of an inch drill bit in there cocktail sticks which I use to apply the glue with I just dispense a little bit of glue onto a piece of cereal packet card and apply it with a cocktail stick and I also use these for removing excess glue from along the joins. And then for the stool um, a piece of foam and this is six millimetres or quarter of an inch thick just a nice soft foam. Fabric of your choice try and choose a nice um, small print pattern and this is a nice cotton fabric so easy to use and a piece of card and I think that's everything you're going to need. The cutting lists are coming up next, and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to begin with the back left and right pieces, and the back centre, and then each of the back mouldings. And I've dispensed some glue here onto a piece of card. I'm going to use a cocktail stick to apply it. And we're going to begin by attaching the back left and right pieces to that back central piece. So apply glue on each of the short edges of the central piece. And then press the pieces together so that the top of each piece is flush. So a nice straight line along the top there. And then just push that along your work surface a little bit to make sure it's not sticking. Don't try and pick it up as it'll fall apart. And then take the long back moulding and apply glue. And that piece can be attached right across the top of those three pieces. And again, make sure that's flush along that back edge. You've got a nice straight edge there which will be at the top. And then take the um, back vertical moulding which is the longer of the um, two pieces. That piece is for the bottom there. Again apply glue. And then that piece we're going to attach centrally over that join and it will overlap this side piece but once the glue has dried we'll just trim that off. 
So just glue it over the join. And all of this is really to strengthen the piece. So when you're making one piece out of sort of more than one piece, it's a good idea just to add mouldings. And they look nice, but they also strengthen the piece. So just apply glue to the remaining vertical moulding and again attach that over that join. It should just sit centrally there but you don't have to measure it, just do that by eye. Press that down and then we can attach the remaining bottom moulding. We'll sit along that side. Along the bottom edge of the side rather. Like that. And that vertical one will overlap, that's fine. But we'll be trimming that off. And the remaining one side as well. And then when you're attaching mouldings to wood, as the glue begins to dry, they'll try to sort of curl away. So you always need to secure them. So I'm just going to use a clean cocktail stick to remove the excess glue from along that joint. And that's really important as well if you're going to be varnishing the piece, because varnish won't take um, over glue residue. So always remove as much as you can as you're going along and then we can um, give it a final sand before we varnish. So I'm just going to um, use clothes pegs now to secure these mouldings into place. You can use um, those mini clamps if you've got them. I'm using clothes pegs because I've got more, more of these. And you can never use enough so always sort of clamp everything down all along the edges and the corners. That piece can then be left to dry. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your pegs or clamps, turn the piece over and then just very carefully cut away that overlapping vertical moulding. So snip down like that and then just snip across like that. piece is free. There. And do the same on the other side. Like that, oops. And then turn the piece over and then we're going to attach a long leg or a back leg to each side. So again apply glue down each side. And just press a leg against each side so again the top of each piece is flush you've got a nice straight line along there and the same there making sure the leg is flat as well on the work surface otherwise they tend to sort of tilt a bit press that all together and again, remember to use your spare cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. Like that, and then once again, that piece can be left to dry off for a moment. So again, once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, turn the piece over onto the flat edge. And we want to make a line down the centre of this back piece. Make a little pencil line in the centre up there and then move the rule down. Make another central mark like that and then join the two up. Just place the ruler just slightly below the pencil marks to allow for the thickness of your pencil like that. And just pop that to one side and then we want to do the same again on the top and the shelf piece.
And when you join your line up, just continue the line onto the front edge of the piece of wood like that. And that will just help when we come to place the draw divide. Okay, so put those pieces to one side for now. And then take one of your side pieces. Now in the cutting list you'll see that I've advised you to cut several of the pieces so that the grain is running in the direction of the shorter edge. Now as a general rule you'd cut so that the grain runs in the direction of the longest edge. But in this case the shorter edge will be facing forwards or will be at the front of the piece and the edge that runs in the direction of the grain is always a bit neater. So that's just why I've advised you to do that. So apply glue to one of those shorter edges. I'm going to attach the piece so it sits just on the inside of the leg, so closest to the sort of back of the piece. And it should be flush with the top of the back, and then should line up with the bottom of that back piece there. And we're on the inside edge, so we've got a bit of the leg overhanging on the outside edge. So line that up with the inside of the leg. You can just hold that in place and remove the excess glue. Just get it as upright as you can by eye, but then we'll pull it all together when we put the top piece into place. So take the top piece and so that your pencil line is on this inside edge, apply glue to one short and one long edge and then put that in piece into place so that it's flush with the top of the back piece. Your pencil line should line up, just use your finger to press that into place at the back. You've got a nice flush top edge and then you can pull that side piece in to meet it and that will square the whole thing up. Again, use your finger to make sure that that edge is flush and make sure that the corner is right in at the back there. So you've got no gaps. Okay, so now take the central divide and just lay it in that corner. And we're just sort of using this as a measurement um, guide. And then just draw a little line on the side piece just below that divide. And this is just to help when we place the shelf piece. So then apply glue to one long edge and one short edge of the divide. You want to position it so it sits just over that central um, pencil line. And you can use the small line that we did on the front of the top piece as a guide as well. The wood should be centrally over the line there. And press that into place. And look from the front angle as well just to make sure that all looks square. And then you can turn that over like that and just apply a line of glue along the top of the divide. And then take the shelf piece and again we want it so the pencil line is on the inside. So apply glue to one short edge and one long edge. And then put that into place so that this bottom part is flush with the bottom of that central back. The side piece should be sitting just below your pencil line you made on the side. And the central divide should be centrally, sitting centrally over that pencil mark we made on the front of the shelf piece. So lots to check there. But you've got time before the glue begins to set. So just ease it all into place, making sure that as you do so it all sort of stays where it should. 
And again, don't forget to remove your excess glue as you go along. Okay, so now take the left bottom piece, and again, I'm going to use this as a measuring tool. So lay it there underneath that top drawer, and just make a little pencil mark just to the edge of it, the outside edge. And pop that to one side and take the one of the internal side pieces and apply glue again to one long and one short edge. And this is another of those pieces where I would advise to cut the shortest edge in the direction of the grain just so it looks neater. And then you want to attach that so it sits on the end of this back piece and so that it's sitting just on the inside of the pencil mark you just made. So I'll just put that into position and turn that round. Just use your finger just to make sure it's flush in there. Like that. And then again, apply glue along the bottom edge of that piece. And then you can take the left hand bottom piece and apply glue again along one long and one short edge. shouldn't really use your finger to wipe the glue off with. Always make sure you wash your hands if you do. And then that piece goes on the inside edge of the side and bottom piece, but underneath that internal divide. And while you're lining that up, just make sure that the internal divide is sitting towards the outside edge of that piece. And I'll just, I'll pick this up when I've done it just to show you what I mean. So as you're gluing that all together, you want to make sure that these edges under here are all flush and that this piece is sitting straight and that these inside edges are flush. So to shape the central moulding, cut a piece of paper to the same size as the piece, fold it in half and we're just creating a template for the shape and then just draw, coming from this outside corner, this open edge, sort of go draw an upward curve. Maybe a bit of a dip before the centre and then come down again in the centre. You want to leave about six millimetres there or quarter of an inch. You don't want to go all the way up. And try to keep your pattern pretty simple, otherwise it'll be too difficult to cut out of the wood. So cut that out, and then open that out, and there's our template, and then you want to draw that onto the uh, piece of wood. So lay it on so the straight edge is flush with the straight edge of the wood, and then just copy that on there. And then take your scribe and you just want to use the scribe like a pencil and just go over that line. And we're not trying to cut through here, we're just scoring the pattern into the wood. And I just find that by doing this first it helps to keep the knife on track when we come to cut it out. So just go over that a couple of times. And then take your knife, and again, we're not trying to cut it out here, but we just want to make a deeper score into the wood. So go over the line, just using the very tip of the craft knife. Always being aware of where your fingers are and careful. And then when you've been over that a few times, you can start putting the knife in a little bit deeper and actually trying to cut through the wood. Now it is a process that takes a bit of time so don't rush at it. 
and it's well worth practicing on a separate piece of wood as well, on a spare piece of wood. Again, just using the very tip of the knife blade. Turn the piece around and work from the other end. And you can actually feel when the knife begins to go through and you can move further along the line. And don't be tempted to pull the wood away or you'll split it. I'm just cutting through the wood here to get rid of that bottom piece first. Like that, and then you've got more room to work on the pattern that's higher up. Going sort of snip bits out. I started to crack there, so I'm being very careful there. very annoying if you're nearly at the end and you sort of cut through the pattern. The final piece, like that, and then you can take your fine grade uh, sandpaper and just begin by sanding along the sort of straight line, the, the straight edge of the wood. And sort of fold the sandpaper to get into those smaller curves. And you can also then sand from front to back just to create a bit of a chamfered edge. It makes it look a lot neater. Once you've got a nice smooth edge this piece can be glued into place. So apply glue along the short edge and the top edge. And then that piece goes just on the inside edge of that left hand drawer and along the top there. You may just need to bring that top bit down because we've sort of left the glue to dry. It may have tried to sort of curl upwards, so just push it all together and then this piece will bring it all together square. Like that, so that that top edge there and the sides are all meeting like that and then apply glue along this side edge of the moulding and then bring in the remaining internal side Again, apply glue to one short, one long edge. And then we don't need to use a marker for this because we're just butting it up against the side of that back piece. And of course the side of this moulding. So just gently manoeuvre that into place making sure all these front edges are flush and just pressing all of that together and then apply glue along the bottom of that internal side piece just put a little tiny bit on the end of that moulding that hangs over there and then bring in the right hand bottom piece and apply glue along one long edge and one short edge. That can then be glued into place underneath that side internal moulding and so that it butts up against the bottom of this shaped moulding. Flush along that bottom edge there and flush along that inside edge as well. So again, lots of bits to check there before the glue begins to dry. It's basically just a mirror image of that other side that we did. Like that. 
that. And then apply glue along these exposed sides. And then bring in the remaining side piece and apply glue along one short edge. And that can then be attached alongside those three ends. And push it all together. Making sure the top and bottom edges are flush with the top and bottom of the piece. I'm just going to press that all together. Remember to move, remove the excess glue from along that leg. And then I've just got a couple of pieces of masking tape here, which I'm going to put over that end just to hold it all together. In fact, just that one piece will do. And again, that can be left to dry. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and sand away any sort of pulls that that's left in the wood. And then lay the piece down like that and we can attach the legs. So apply glue to this square at the top of the leg. And then so that the sort of foot part is curving outwards, press the square right into the corner of those two pieces. So the front and the side. That should be absolutely square or flush with those, with that corner. I'm just pressing that into place. And you'll see there from the front angle that the line of the leg is in line with this corner of the dressing table. So apply the remaining leg in the same way. Carefully remove the excess glue from around the edge. And then that can be left to dry. We're now going to bevel one long edge from both short edges of the dressing table top piece. So to do that, hold the piece against a sheet of sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and simply sweep it towards you, keeping it at that same angle. And you don't need to press too hard and already you can see that's beginning to bevel. So just keep going until you've got a nice even bevel, like that, and then just turn the piece and do the same on each side. So, and then apply glue to the top of the dressing table. Use a cocktail stick just to spread that out. And then attach the top so the bevel side is facing downwards and that the back of the piece is flush with the back of the dressing table and so that there's an even overhang at either side and that's normally the depth of the, of the bevel. So press that into place. Use your spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue. And then I'm going to use masking tape and clamps to secure that. I'll just put a couple of strips right over the top. I'm 
and around the front as well. And then you can put a couple of strips over the back just to hold that into place. And I'm pressing it down but not so that I'm not pressing down on those front legs. So pick the piece up as you're sort of tightening your tape. And then I'm going to use clamps along this front edge. And that's just because as the glue begins to dry, you can see there the wood begins to sort of curl away or lift upwards. So you always need to use clamps to hold, hold it into place. A couple more in there. And then once again, that piece can be left to dry. So in the cutting list, I advise you to cut the pieces required for the drawers after construction of the unit. And that's just because slight misplacement of any of these pieces will affect the size of the drawer opening. And it can be quite annoying when you come to fit the drawers and they just don't fit. So always construct the piece first and then cut the pieces you need. Now I have given the measurements in the cutting list and that's if everything goes perfectly. But if you need to adjust them, just deduct um, half a millimetre from your width, your height and your depth. And then that will allow the drawer to slide in and out easily. So once you've cut your pieces, begin by applying glue to the outer edges of the base piece. And then attach the side pieces so that the front and back of each piece are level with the front and back of the base. like that and then always slide things across your worktop never try and pick them up or they'll probably just come apart and then this piece has been drying for a few minutes now and then you're ready to attach the front and back and just push those up against the sides making sure that all the edges are flush just gently squeeze that all together and again that piece can be left to dry so once the drawer has dried you can sand it on all edges and on the top and bottom as well so on the top and bottom go round in small circular motions like that and I'm not doing it just because it makes such a horrible sound and then on the sides just go along in the one direction so that you don't round off the edges and that will give you a nice flush draw and then if you did need to resize just cut the moulding so that you're leaving about a millimetre or three sixty fourths of an inch around each edge so you've got a bit of a border around there and we're going to shape um, the moulding as well. I'm going to bevel all sides. Now because it's such a flimsy piece of wood, um, it's the 0.8mm or 132nd of an inch, support it with your finger as low down as you can when it's on the paper. And again, just sweep it towards you, keeping it at a 45 degree angle. And then when you're doing the longer side, go across the paper like that rather than dragging it towards you as you'll, as you'll find that the wood will just split so do that side going across till it just starts to bevel off and do that on all edges and then when you've done that just go round with your smooth grade sandpaper just to sort of tidy up each edge like that and then apply glue to the back of the moulding that and attach it to the drawer so that you're leaving that even border and you can just do that by eye no need to measure and again remember to use your spare cocktail stick to remove the excess from around the edges And then as I said before, wood will always sort of try and curl away as the glue dries, so always 
just clamp it into place. You can use clamps or clothes pegs for this. I think I can get two in there. And then that can be left to dry. And I've already done the other drawer, so we can now mark this up for the um, drawer knob. So first of all, measure across the draw front and then just make a tiny little pencil mark in the centre there very faintly and then turn it and, and find the centre along the draw height. You can do a little dot like that and then erase that pencil line. I find that pencil still shows even though even once you've varnished so always just erase your pencil lines. And then I'm using this mini drill to make the hole and support the drawer as you're doing it and don't press down too hard on the drill just keep twisting until you're through and then once you're through just give the drill bit a little wiggle like that and that will help the stem of the drawer knob to go in more smoothly Make sure that the draw knob fits first before you apply the glue. And that should go in there and push down flat against the draw front. And you can just pop that out. And just apply a tiny little dot of glue over the hole. And then pop the draw knob back in. And press it flat. And if you've got a bit of an overhang inside, you can just sand that off. Just sand off the wood that it pushes through. And then very important to remove the excess glue. Otherwise the varnish doesn't take and then you'll have a sort of pale ring around the draw knob. It doesn't look very nice. So complete the remaining drawers and then we'll make the stool. Okay, so this little stool is really quick and easy to make and we're going to begin by making a pencil mark 3mm or 1 8th of an inch from the bottom of each leg. Just put a little mark across the bottom of each one. Like that. And then divide the legs into two pairs. I'm going to glue two supports between each pair, one at the top and one so it sits just above those lines we've just made. So just apply a tiny blob of glue to the end of the support, to each end. Pop that there like that. And then glue that to the top of that left hand leg so that the, you've got a nice flush line across there. And then this one just glue so it sits just above that pencil line. Like that and then bring in the remaining leg. So line at the top and then line at the bottom support like that. Very carefully press it all together. making sure it all stays where it should. Slide it along your work surface and that piece can be left to dry and then just create a similar piece with the remaining legs. And while the leg pieces are drying we're going to glue a support along two sides of the seat part and along opposite edges. So apply glue along two outside edges glue a support along each edge like that making sure it's all flat on your work surface like that again press that together slide it along and that can be left to dry for a moment 
So once the glue has dried off, turn the leg upside down and just make a pencil mark in the centre of that bottom support. Just do it on that one as well. Pencil mark there. And then take the seat part and apply glue along one of the long edges. And then glue a set of legs to the seat so that the sides are flush. And then this is where you can use a piece of sort of spare strip wood just to push that on and that sort of squares it up. It's just when you're making small or fragile pieces like this rather than using your fingers to press it together use a piece of spare wood you can just press it together a little bit harder then until the glue begins to take like that and I'll just remove that excess glue again okay, I'm going to lay that down and glue the remaining support to that bottom support so that it sits centrally over that pencil line. So press that into place, make sure it's sitting centrally on the support and square. That. and then apply glue to all of these side edges and then you can just attach the remaining set of legs get the top lined up first and then you can sort of turn it and line up that bottom centre support press it together very gently make sure it's all square and flat at the top and that your support is staying where it should And once the glue has begun to dry off, you can just remove any excess there. Again, just be really careful with it as you're working on it, because like I said, it is a fragile piece. And that's actually it, and then we'll add the, um, the cushion afterwards. But such a simple little technique and one that can be used to make sort of occasional tables as well obviously a bit bigger than this but the same design can be used for little tables so once that's dry both pieces are ready to varnish and I'm going to do a little bit more sanding before I start the varnishing just to make sure I've got rid of all that glue residue and we'll get a better finish so to make the cushion for the stool, begin by cutting just a piece of card that's just slightly smaller than the top of the stool, so about half a millimetre all the way around, and that's just to allow for the thickness of the fabric. And then just apply a bit of glue to the card. This is just card from a, inside a um, packet of cake or something. Quite thin and then glue that to the foam press that down like that and then just use something to weigh that down while the glue dries so once the glue has dried just cut around the card Get rid of those. and then cut a piece of fabric that is about 15 millimeters or 5 eighths of an inch bigger 
all the way around so you've got a nice border like that and then cut from the edge of the fabric to the corner of the foam at two of the edges and turn it round and do it like that and then beside each of those cuts towards the outer edge of the fabric make another cut that is the same thickness as the foam so in this case six millimeters or quarter of an inch like that so we're making two little flaps at either side and turn it round and like that and then we can cut away this outer corner okay so next apply glue to each of those little strips we cut and then pull that up and glue the strip to the side of the foam like that and then do the same on the other side Again, glue those strips down that same side. Like that. And just let that dry off for a moment. And then apply some glue to the card. And glue down those side flaps. You can just trim a little bit off each end. Like that. And then apply glue to that end flap. over and onto the bottom there. Pinch the corners in and we'll just stick them down give us a nice end seam and then do the same on the other side. Once the fabric has dried just apply glue to the top of the stool and then just stick the cushion on top like that press it down and leave it to dry and there is the completed dressing table and stool and as I said before I've done several pieces now for the bedroom and one of them was this lovely little um, mirror with drawers and I think that looks really lovely with this just look at my um, videos and you'll find that one in there I hope you've enjoyed this project if so please do subscribe to the channel as there's lots more to come and if you enjoy making miniatures you might also be interested in my books I've published three of them now they're all available from Amazon in paperback format I'll pop a couple of links below. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.